Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I am just in a hotel room in Quebec, of all places. Uh, I got flown out here uh, the day before yesterday to do a show with Tom Bailey from the Thompson Twins. It was all a very last minute thing. Um, their drummer they've been using couldn't get over here, unfortunately. But uh, luckily I was available, so it's really nice. I've, I've got to come out to Canada, I've got to see some family. We did a show last night in Toronto and uh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Um, so yeah, so I thought that I'd just uh, take this time. I've got a day off today, so I thought I'd record a video. I may even record two, who knows? But for now it's just this one. Then I'm gonna go to the gym and then I'm gonna see how I feel. <laughs> um, but today I wanted to talk about something that is definitely a theme that runs through my life. Um, it runs through a lot of other musicians that I know. Um, I've spoken a lot with a few of them. Um, and that is the feeling of uh, feeling down, feeling maybe depressed, whether that's actually depressed or like clinically depressed or whether it's, it's kind of just feeling a bit, you know, exhausted and, and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, this is a feeling that I've had to deal with myself for many years. Uh, I've sort of sought professional help. I've had CBT, which is amazing. It's a wonderful thing if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, it gives you some great tools to uh, like deal with stuff. But I just wanted to talk about some practical things that I do sort of day to day to help combat it. Um, and I mean, I've, I've been generally great for probably the last couple of years, um, but you know, these things still rear their ugly he head and, as, and usually when you really don't need it, <laughs> you know, when things are already a little bit rough and then it's like, oh, but I'm convinced that they're kind of connected. But anyway, um, so yeah, I've personally had these moments um, and they're times when I've gotten to a state where I've just been like, you know what, maybe I should just give up drums when things aren't working out, when, you know, I'm, you're not getting the gig, you're not getting the audition, people aren't calling you. And there's times that I've been like, well, maybe, maybe this just isn't for me, maybe, you know, maybe I'm not good enough, uh, which, as I've spoken about before, is a really big part of my general makeup as a human. Um, I like to feel like I'm good enough for stuff, and that's why I try and work really hard. But you know, when you do that work and then you're not seeing any results, that can be really, really rough. And it's funny actually, so, well, it's not funny, but uh, I was speaking to um, another drummer, Johnny Atkinson, we were talking about this. And uh, I remember we were just sitting having a coffee somewhere, some seaside town on the Kim Wilde UK tour. And what we sort of like, I mean, we love putting the world to right, love it. But what we realized, or what I realized that day as we were talking is that a lot of, so as a session musician, a lot of your self-worth and your, what's the word? A lot of your self-worth and your self-esteem is based around people calling you for gigs. So, you know, our job as a session musician is to be good enough to play with artists and to tour with them, record with them, whatever. Um, and if the phone isn't ringing, then we don't have any worth. Well, this is how I feel, and I know that Johnny sort of expressed the same sort of feeling, and I think that there's a few other musicians that definitely feel the same. And it becomes a really odd way of living because, you know, the world can be all wonderful and rosy when you're, like, on tour or whatever. Like, right now, wonderful. I'm in Canada, I'm in Quebec City, I've never been here, it's beautiful, I'm working, I'm being paid, life is good. But, you know, once that kind of tour bubble ends, however long it is, I mean, this stint I'm doing is five days, essentially. But say you're on tour for two months. You're in that tour bubble, it's all amazing, blah, 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 blah. The second you get back, it's like, oh, now what? Because, you know, your, as I say, your, your being is based around an artist calling you but aside from that like an artist working like the artist has to agree to be like want to be touring to even be giving you the call in the first place so the fact that you're basing your sort of self-worth around that is a very volatile thing so um, before when I used to come off to tour I used to be an absolute nightmare to be around because I just went into this state of post tour blues as they call it but it was essentially a state of depression because it was just it was like the rug had been taken from under under you, even though you knew it was coming. 
but you know all the logicality in the world is wonderful in theory but when you actually come down to it it's like oh but I, I don't feel good <laughs> um, so yeah so I wanted to talk about some ways that I combat this feeling um, because that's the other thing if the phone doesn't ring for ages you just start thinking why am I doing this nobody wants me so maybe I shouldn't be doing this and I've had that many times and it's really funny it's always the moments that I feel like that and I feel the closest to putting down the sticks essentially um, you know, I just push that tiny bit further and then I'll get a phone call. And that has happened more than once. Like, it's, it's, I feel like it's no coincidence that things happen like that. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to talk about some ways that I sort of combat these things and these feelings. And you know, I do still have them, a little bit less so now because of something that I will explain. Um, so the first thing that I do when I'm feeling like that is um, I recognise that I feel out of control and as I've said many times before I'm a control freak most musicians I know are control freaks so that's fine you kind of just got to be okay with that and go right okay I know that I feel happier when I feel in control of what's happening to me and my life this is you know it's your life you shouldn't have to worry about people calling you for stuff to feel good about life you should find things that are you know that, fulfilling to you and that you can control so that's what I usually do so first thing I do favorite thing ever write a plan or a list love a list write a list and then I'll start sort of saying okay so what are the things that I can do to feel more in control of the situation and usually it's things like getting a routine to my day and that will include working out which I know that I've spoken about so many times before and if you're not into working out you're probably completely sick of me hearing it but Every day I work out, I feel like no matter what else happens in the day, at least I've done something good for myself. Like the rest of the day to, can go to pot, but as long as I've done that workout, I feel good. But consequently, if I don't work out, and even if I do have a great day and I'm doing stuff, there's always this kind of, like, I was going to say dull shine, that doesn't make sense. Like a dull part of my day, because it's like, I mean great day but you know it's it's slightly more lethargic than a day that I will have worked out so that's the first thing I do I get into a routine and make sure that I work out every day essentially which I do in fact like I say I'm gonna go work out after I've done this video because I've just eaten breakfast because they laid on free breakfast for us and I was so happy that I couldn't pass it up because you know musicians love food um yeah so working out perfect uh and then the next thing I'll do is I will make sure that I'm eating right. I'll make sure that I'm not eating junk food because that is the biggest temptation for me. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm feeling rubbish, I want to eat rubbish and a lot of it. Like I'd say my body weight in it. <laughs> um, so I try and like sort of, yeah, put that in a pen, I suppose, and just go, right, don't do that. That's definitely not the right thing to do, logically. In fact, I've started doing this really interesting thing. I don't know whether other people do this, but, um, and it seems to have been working, although I have fallen off the wagon a little bit recently. But hopefully by the time this comes out, I'll be straight back on it, because now I'm talking about it, so that means I have to do it, otherwise I'm being a complete hypocrite, and I don't like being a hypocrite. So... What I do is, um, I get really bad cravings, especially in the evening, for things like chocolate or crisps or whatever, or chips, if you're in the States or Canada. Uh, and what I'll do is, I have this whiteboard in, in my kitchen. So, say it gets to like 9 o'clock and I'm like, ooh, I really fancy some bourbon biscuits. Then I'll, I'll sort of acknowledge that and then I'll write it on the white whiteboard. Oh, okay, cool. So it's kind of like I'm logging it. I, all right. And by the end of the week, I basically choose a day a week, whether that's like a Sunday or it depends on my schedule. Basically, when I can completely indulge, I go out to the shops and I just buy all the stuff that I was craving throughout the week and then I just go to town just for that day, that one day I can start from breakfast if I want to. I don't usually, but... Um, yeah, and then, and then, anyway, so I don't, I'm not sure why I'm talking about this. Oh yeah, eating healthily. Yeah, so that way you can kind of choose more healthy things, knowing that, okay, on the Sunday, whatever the day is, uh, you know, you can completely indulge and just have one day of it. Because at the end of it, there's so, only so much you can eat in one day. But if you're eating that over the course of a week, you can eat a hell of a lot more. So anyway, it seems to be working for me so far. But like I say, I've fallen off the wagon a little bit. But um, in fact, I really have. I've been eating a lot of uh, chocolate-covered cornflake clusters. Oh, they're so delicious. 
I'm one for texture as well. They like the most perfect texture. Anyway, I need to stop talking about food. Okay, so back to this. So uh, yeah, and it's almost like a reward as well for the week. So like eating healthily for the week, but it definitely makes a difference. Like just getting in the veg and the fruit and all that sort of stuff. It just, it does make a difference. It's really annoying. And I know that it's totally like logical and like simple stuff, but so many people don't. I haven't done it. I didn't do it for years. Like I would sort of, but not properly. But now I'm, I'm sort of in a good place with it. So yeah, exercise know that you're eating healthily like meal prepping and all that is really good for that you can look all that up i'm sure you know exactly what that is um and yeah so that's what i'll do then i'll sort of like think about ways that i can be proactive about what i'm trying to do so if it is just literally the session musician thing is your thing you want to be back on the road you want to be touring with other artists great okay so you know that that's your goal I want another tour. <laughs> um, so what I'll do is I'll send out emails to like friends of mine, uh, to like any musician that I know and just be like, just catch up, just generally catch up and sort of say, oh, I've just come off this tour. You know, depending on the person. So either it would be just a general kind of, hey, how you doing? Sort of top of mind thing. So, um, uh, so my drum teacher and many other people sort of say, you know, it's best to, if you're on people's minds so that when the opportunity comes up that they are looking for a drummer for something, you're the last person they've they've thought of, so they'll be the first person that you think of, they think of to get someone in. So I'll do that, um, and then some other people. I'll, I'll just be really blunt with them because, like, I know them really well. They've been very kind to me. They'll just be like, oh, "I've just come off this tour. I'm feeling a bit, you know." So if you hear of anything, would you mind putting me forward? And you know, I've got some of the most wonderful, supportive, helpful kind emails from people when I've come off tours or I haven't sort of been on a tour for a while um, and they will just sort of like write the most heartfelt things that are just really sort of basically saying we all go through this you know it's fine maybe try doing x y and z and you know and I'll be thinking of you if there is anything I will be thinking of you perfect example is uh, Jeff Dugmore and uh, the reason I'm mentioning him is twofold one because he's literally the first person that's come to my mind because he's so kind and he's so like he gives so much he's so generous with his time and his and his um experience and i i adore that man um the second reason that i'm mentioning about him because he is actually the reason he is actually the reason that i play with tom bailey from the thompson twins because jeff was the last drummer to play with him back in the 80s and Tom rang him to do the tour four years ago, uh, which he couldn't do because he was doing, oh, this huge Japanese artist, I always forget his name. Anyway, um, he was busy doing that and he put me forward for it. And um, yeah, so I'm eternally grateful for him for that because yeah, Jeff, he's a wonderful soul, wonderful soul. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I will email people like that and I'll just be like, quite honestly, like, I'm uh, freaking out. Um, and then other things that I'll do, I'll make sure that I'm going to gigs, I'll make sure that I'm going to jams. Um, obviously, it's slightly different now because I have the studio, so I'll make sure that I'm like putting out videos and me playing or recording for people or whatever else. Um, but back in the day, it would have been, yeah, just setting up a camera and a microphone, if that. Um, in a rehearsal room and just recording myself and, and, and just, yeah, just sort of getting myself out there basically. That's one thing that I know people sort of have things about social media and I totally used to if I'm honest. It's so good. It's so good for keeping in people's minds, even if it's just like the odd sort of random post. It's a really great way to yeah, just to keep up with people, see what everyone else is up to, you know. It's like, it, there's so many gigs going on with so many incredible musicians. Even if you don't know them, just go to the gig, just get chatting to people. Even if it's just other, like, um, audience members, chances are there's going to be musicians in the audience. There always are. And you can usually spot them because they're the ones that are staring at not the singer. So <laughs> if you see someone staring at a guitarist just for ages and it's not like, I don't know, Joe Bonamassa, I don't, I don't know why I said that name, it's such a random one. Um, yeah, if they're staring at like the random guitarist on stage left who's kind of like the rhythm guitarist for ages, chances are they're probably a musician or they know them. And yeah, just go, go get chatting, just like, how you doing? You know, I chat so much rubbish to people, honestly, you wouldn't believe. If you were a fly on the wall with most of the conversations I have with people, I really start the most, most random conversations, but 
hey, it's fine, it's me. I, I have to embrace these things. Um, so yeah, I find being like trying to be as proactive as you can about getting another phone call, about meeting more people, I, I find that is really useful. And, and again, it's something that for some reason was drilled into me as a kid. It was that thing of just being, be proactive, be proactive, be proactive. In fact, the person that really used to drive it home always, like so often, was um, Sharice's dad, Eddie. So uh, anyone that doesn't know, Sharice is the drummer that I grew up with. Um, we started playing drums on the same day when we were 11 years old. And yeah, I always remember her dad just being like, you've got to be proactive. You know, It's not going to come to you. Who, who, who are you to think that these things are just going to fall on your lap? You need to work for it. You need to get out there. You need people to know you. And, you know, like I said, we were going to blues jams at like 11 years old. So it was always that kind of attitude of we could be doing more. We should be doing more. And I continue to have that sort of drilled into me. It's just part of my DNA now. Hence why I'm sort of like doing these videos. I, do, I mean, it's terrible. It's actually to my detriment sometimes because, I, as I've said before, I can get quite overwhelmed and quite exhausted. Um, anyway, it's fine. I, I seem to be dealing with it. And sorry if I've look, I look a bit tired. It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, so that's another good thing to do is sort of try and be as proactive as you can. The newest thing that I sort of like realised to really combat this feeling of sort of being down and as I said linking your self esteem, your self worth to someone else calling you, uh, a way that I've combated that is creating something myself that I'm in control of, that I feel that in the same way of learning an instrument, you know, it's one of those things where you get out what you put in, you put in, I don't know, 10 hours of practice at the end of that 10 hours you can play something new. It's very logical and I love things that are logical and I think if you can find something that is a, um, a profession version of that or, or some sort of service or whatever where the more that you put into it the more that you're going to get out because you are not the boss but it's your baby, it's your thing, um, that can do so much for your like your whole feeling and and not feeling out of control and you know depressed and down and all that sort of stuff and the first experience that i had of that was not that long ago it was in 2014 and i was it 2014 2015 anyway i basically decided oh, i don't know why i decided this to do a one woman show. I call it a one woman show. It actually wasn't. I was the only person on stage and you know, it was me drumming and I sort of like had to create all these concept ideas and sort of like, basically the whole basis of this was, I've never seen that done on stage. I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, it was a one woman show, but actually it was me and my fiance, now husband. Um, and we put together this show. It was called Feathers and Cogs. And it basically was this, it was a very artistic sort of, um, it was loosely based around, actually it was, actually I, I hadn't thought of this before I started filming, um, it was actually based around this kind of struggle of depression, of having this sort of dark figure who's always sort of there telling you that you're not good enough and you should give up and what are you doing here um, and battling that but actually the reality of if you embrace those things then you become stronger and it sounds crazy probably but you know I know what my biggest fears are I know what my biggest weaknesses are I know the voice and I know what that thing says to me but then I end up using it to my advantage you know I use my biggest fears to motivate me and to make me work harder so yeah like I said never really thought about it until literally just now um so yeah that's what this show was about and it was almost like a cathartic kind of thing of just letting it all out and it was i felt very vulnerable it was a lot of work it was a year's worth of work um and it was yeah but we put together this show and we did it and i've never felt i've never felt more stressed in my life i've also never felt more proud of something and you know the performance that i did it was it wasn't perfect but then that's because i'm a perfectionist i'm always going to see the the i'm always going to pick out the stuff but it happened people seem to respond really well to it and i just felt like a new sense of pride and a new sense of this is this is the way to go 
because it was mine. It was my baby. I, I, you know, I, if I wanted to change something, I'd change something. If I wanted to do something else, I'd do something else. And it wasn't a question of if or asking someone's permission. It was just finding out how and, and just doing it, just finding a way. So that was a massive lesson for me that actually, and in, in that period, I never once felt down. I felt incredibly energized, incredibly motivated. I'd be up till like three in the morning, like building these ideas and concepts. And then I'd be up again at like six to, to do more. And it was like, it was exhausting, but it was, it was amazing. So anyway, that was my first sort of experience of that. However, once I'd done the show, I was so like emotionally drained from it. I was just like, okay, I feel like I need to leave that for a while because to sort of embark on it again felt like it was gonna like take a lot out of me. But what from that, I sort of learned about this sort of feeling in control of something that's yours, that's your destiny. And then later on I got the opportunity to build emilydrums.com, my, my remote recording drum studio. And it's been exactly the same since doing that. It's it's, I love it. It's somewhere that I can put my energy into. If I'm feeling down, I can go, right, I can be proactive with this. I'm going to go and do stuff for emilydrums.com. I'm going to do videos. I'm going to contact people. You know, I'm going to write blogs. I'm going to do, yeah, just, just whatever I can. I'm going to learn new skills. I'm going to, you know, do the business side of stuff. And it's just something that, again, I put in the work and I see the results. And yet, there's no science to it, and sometimes you do a lot of work on one thing and nothing really comes of it, but you're always learning something, so that's fine. Like, even if it's learning that that's probably not the way to do things. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's changed my life completely. So now, when I come off the road, I go straight into the studio, and that is my thing, that is my baby. That means that, you know, I, I haven't had the post-tour blues for two years, essentially, because even on days off like today, I could just be mooching around and stuff, which is nice, or I could just be going to sleep, going to bed. I could do that, but I wouldn't feel like I've accomplished anything and gotten any further towards my life's goal, whatever that is. Um, but now I sort of like have these things that I can put my energy into, and it's great, and I feel productive. And equally, these videos. These videos started because I wasn't feeling down about anything, but it came from a time that I was feeling really kind of like out of control actually. And I thought, right, I need to focus on something where I'm giving back to people. And you know, I've always had it in my head about doing something to speak to, as I say, the kids that, are, that were my age when I sort of started playing drums in my formative years and creating something for them that would give them some insight and some information and hopefully help their direction in where they wanted to go. Consequently, I mean, it, it's reached so many more people than that because I've been getting the most amazing sort of comments and messages and I've spoken to some wonderful people. Gosh, you guys are some wonderful people, I must say. So kind and so supportive and wonderful to each other. Forget about me, I'm not even just, I'm out of the room, but yeah, to each other. And I, I love it, it, it makes me feel, I, it just makes me, yeah, it it puts my faith in humanity, which I've never lost. Um, I've always had that. In fact, I need to tell you, uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm going to tell you this. Um, so when I was about, I think I must have been about four, maybe a bit older. So I had this great Aunt Mary. She was from, uh, she was a Geordie lass. She was from Newcastle. And she used to tell me, well, I say she used to tell me. She once told me, and I remember it so well, she said, um, Emily, you need to see the good in everyone. I don't care if, you know, they might be in jail. You need to find the good in everyone. You need to just, just see it because everyone has good in them. Everyone has good in them. And I, I just, for some reason, that's always stuck with me. It's always in the back of my head. And it's really amazing because these videos really show how wonderful people are to each other. And so it makes me really happy. So yeah, I'm kind of saying thank you to you guys. You're kind of awesome. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I think that that's a really good way to, to deal with feeling down uh, is to find something that you feel that you can put your energy into personally that can be yours, that you can be your baby, that you see the input and the output. Um, yeah, it's, but of course, you know, there's no science to it. It is tough. Um, 
I kind of just wanted to do this video mainly to say that everyone goes through these things, especially music, especially creative people, I should say. I don't know why. I'm no scientist. I have no clue. But all I know is that it's something that I see in a lot of my musician friends, artist friends. Um, we all do, do go through it. Not a lot of us speak about it, but those are the ways that have helped me. Um, and like I said, I've been at the point of literally putting down my sticks like you know, I may have had someone there to, to talk me around and just say, look, you just can't do that. But a lot of the time I'm just by myself in a room just going, I'm just exhausted. You know, I just, I'm done. I, I don't want to do this anymore. But then there's something in me that just goes, just push just a little bit further. And it's really funny because what I start thinking, what I've started thinking recently is when things do feel hard and you're not sure if it's the right thing to do, whatever, what I always like to think is, okay, there are many people that have felt like this right now in this moment. The difference between the people that are going to be getting to where they want to go and not is the person that just pushes that little bit further. And I always want to be that person that's pushing that little bit further. So if you feel like that, just think, right, there's lots of people feeling like this. I just need to push. And at the end of the day, I think in anything in life, persistence is so essential. I think persistence and momentum. I think if you're able to just say yes to tons of stuff, you'll be tired, <laughs> you'll be busy, it will be crazy. But the momentum is, is kind of, um, it's a really incredible thing to get things going. And like I say, persistence is everything. Literally, the reason that I'm here, the reason that I am in Quebec City right now, is because I just have never given up because I've always had that one little glimmer even in the worst times it's gone but you just gotta keep going and you know it's that it's okay you ready for the cheese oh yeah what is it they say about that like pressure with the diamond like how diamonds are created the pressure the pressure the pressure but you you have to go through that to create the diamond I know that's cheesy and it's probably like completely not right uh, what's the word for that like scientifically it's probably completely wrong but anyway I just keep thinking that right I'm gonna be one of the the few percentage of people that does keep pushing and who knows where you'll end up you know I've ended up in some very odd situations because I've just gone okay I'm gonna go do this but anyway like I say I just wanted to put this out there because if you are going through this or have been going through this I mean the reason that I did I've done this video really is because I got a question on one of my Facebook lives from um, a great drummer called Adam Stanley from the UK. If you want to go check him out, he's really, really cool. Um, but he asked me this question and it and it made me, A, I was really um, impressed that he very publicly was so open because I'm all about that, as you can tell. I tell you the most random things and I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, he was very like yeah I, I really appreciate that openness um, and it made me remember that everyone, well not everyone, okay not everyone but a lot of people I know go through this and a lot of people don't talk about it and I, do, I, don't, I don't think that's right and I think it's just good to know that everyone goes through this and, and you're not alone um, but you just got to keep pushing and it will be alright and you just need to find ways of coping. I think it's something about being a creative mind um, but if you can kind of embrace the craziness of it, then you end up becoming stronger. Like I said in my show, feathers and cogs, there you go. Embrace the darkness, it's good. And I'm not talking about the band. You can embrace them as well if you like them, but I'm talking about, you know, that, that, that voice on your shoulder going, you're not good enough, you're not going to do any good. My one's the fear of, of not being good enough, so I totally overcompensate by working way, way harder than many people. But hey! It works, so it's fine. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you alone. Sorry for rambling on. Sorry for telling you very strange anecdotes about my great Aunt Mary, but that's all right. Uh, she's here in spirit. Um, yeah, okay, right, I'm gonna leave you to it. I'm gonna go and work out. I can't really procrastinate anymore, I don't think. I don't even know how long I've been talking. Almost there.
that's nice. As soon as I looked at the camera, it totally just like went, nope, not recording anymore. Um, anyway, love you, leave you. Have a lovely day. I'll be doing some sort of Facebook Live uh, this week. I'll let you know in the comments when. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live tonight from here, but that will have been weeks ago by the time this comes out. I'm going to stop making it confusing. I will speak to you soon. It's lovely to see you. And uh, yeah, just keep going. Keep pushing. All right, see you later. Bye.